All right, guys, so today we are going to be talking about exponential regression. And guys, we've already um, used uh, linear regression before, but guys, now we're going to be talking about exponential regression. And guys, remember, exponential functions are um, anything that is in the form of y equals a times b to the x, or you could also write it as f of x equals a times b to the x, right? You could have y equals or f of x equals. And um, guys, basically remember, what we are trying to do is we want to find the line, or in this case, the curve, because it's an exponential function, of best, oops, best fit. So guys, we want to find the line or the curve that best fits the data. So we are going to use these steps, very, very similar to our steps for, um, uh, yeah, very, very similar to our steps for linear regression. And so guys, the first thing that I would do is go ahead and clear your calculator, that second plus seven arrow arrow one two. And guys, what this does is this will kind of reset your data. I highly recommend doing that. Um, obviously before any tests or anything like that. And so, um, and then guys, um, the first thing that you want to do before you do any kind of regression is you want to hit that mode button, scroll all the way down until we get to that stat diagnostics. You want to turn that guy on and then we'll go ahead and get out of there. And guys, so what this does when you hit the mode button and you turn on that stat diagnostics, you turn it on, guys, what that does is that turns, um, that gives you your R value. All right, guys, so um, this um, gives you your R value. And guys, remember your R value is that correlation coefficient. And so guys, remember there is a spectrum here. There's like a little spectrum. And so guys, if your R value is close to negative one, in this case, that is very strong decay, all right, or strong negative correlation or strong decay. If it's close to a positive one, that is a strong growth, all right? And if it's close to zero, that is our weak correlation. So the R value just kind of tells us whether or not it is strong or weak. And so guys, what we're going to do is we're going to follow these calculator steps here over on the left as we fill in this data. So guys, the first thing that we want to do is we already turned on our mode and did our stack diagnostics. Now we're going to go here, we're going to hit stat, edit, and um, we hit that enter button. And now guys, we're going to place our X values in list one and our Y values in list two. So guys, this little right here, those would be our list one. This would be our list two. So I'm going to go ahead and enter those in. So we have one, zero, one, two, three, and then six, 17, 56, 158. So that's after I've pushed my little stat button here. And so um, once we've done that, I'll zoom in just a smidge for you guys. So once we've done that, you see that's the, that's, I've got all my data in. It matches my things in my here, in here perfectly. And now guys, we go back to stat. And this time I'm going to arrow over to calc, all right? So it says arrow over calc. Now this is the big difference with exponential regression, okay? This is our big change. Now guys, um, in our last unit, we scrolled down and we hit linear regression because we were doing linear um, functions. Now guys, we want to scroll all the way down till we get to that exponential regression, okay? And then it says you hit enter five times and then you can just hit calculate and guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to list out our A and our B values and write our equation in this standard form. So guys, we have our A and we have our B value from our calculator here. And we are going to, it says round to the nearest hundredth. So that is two decimal places. So I'm going to go here and I would say my A value is that 5.9. 15 or 5.92 and my B value is going to be that 3.005 or 3.01 and then guys my R value now this one it says does round to the nearest hundredths and so if we looked at my R value here that would be 0 0.0996 and so if we were going to round that to the nearest hundredth it actually would round to a one which means that is a very strong 
growth. All right, that is very oops strong. That is a very strong growth um, correlation. All right, so that has a very strong growth right there. And so, guys, my equation, if we wrote it out, it would just be y equals 5.92 times 3.01 to the x power. And so, guys, um, one thing I want you guys to notice here is the, um, the y-intercept of the line of best fit is 5.92. If you looked at my table, that 0, 06 does represent a point that is your y-intercept, but remember, these points are used to find the line of best fit. So guys, our y-intercept, we are actually not getting from the table. It is not 6. It is 5.92. It's close to that because my curve would go very, very close to that 6. But the, So the y-intercept of the actual equation is here at that 5.92. You can see the y-intercept in the table, but it doesn't exactly match. Okay, and so now we're gonna try, we're gonna follow these steps again. If you need to take your notes and just highlight these steps, please, please do so. But guys, remember, it's essentially two different um, uh, sets of steps here. We have one where we enter the data, and then we have the second one where we actually calculate the data and then write our equation. So first we enter our data, and those are gonna be the same four steps no matter what kind of regression you use. And then guys, the calculating and the writing your equation here, that changes on which type of regression you use. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, Gene here. So Gene invested $380 in stocks. Over the next five years, the value of our investment grew as shown in the table. So this is important, we know that it grew so that means my B value better be bigger than one because this should repre represent exponential growth. And it says round all coefficients to the nearest hundredth. So guys, remember that is two decimals. All right, so that is two decimal places. So what we're going to do is we are going to plug these values in here. So I'm gonna take my calculator, go back to my stat, my edit, go up to the, and I clear out the list, go to the top, I hit clear and enter and it kind of clears out the list and then we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and then we're going to go and do 380, 395, 411, 427, 445, and 462. Once you have all of your data entered I would double check it, ch double check it and remember your x values go in list 1 and your y values go in list 2. Now that we've entered all of our data, now we are going to calculate our data. So we're going to look at this and we say stat calc. We scroll all the way down till we get that exponential regression. And we get an A value of 379.92. 379.92. And then our B value of 1.04. So that is a 1.04. And then guys, as we predicted, this was going to be growth because it tells us, first of all, that the investment grew, but also my B value is greater than one. So guys, that is a growth right there. And the R value that we have right here is 0 0.99995. Once again, it's that 0 0.99995, so that's basically one, so that is a very, very strong growth that is positive. So if we were going to write out our equation, it would be y equals 379.92 times 1.04 to the x power. Oops, there we go. And guys, once again, you will notice the y-intercept here is not the exact same point from the table. This point on the table um, is very, 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 very close. But remember, this line is the line that fits the data the best. So it's not going to match all of those points perfectly. Um, now, one thing that I want you guys to notice here, if my um, B value is 1.04, that does mean that we have a 4% growth, right? So guys, that is a 4% growth.
growth because it is 4.04 over that one. So that's a 4% growth. But guys, the beautiful thing about this is we can use this equation to predict the value of her stock in 10 years after she purchases it. And it says round to the nearest whole number. So guys, what we do is we use this equation right here, y equals, and I say 379.92, and we are going to go ahead and um, do that 1.04, and we raise it to the 10th power because we want that 10 years. So guys, that x is equal to our 10. So now I go ahead and I'm going to type this in using the data that we got. So that's 379.92 times 1.04 raised up to the 10th power. And that gives us $562. It says round to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to say $562. If it said round to the nearest cent, then it would be 562.37, but it didn't. It said round to the nearest whole number, so we stop right there at $562, that F of 10. All right, and then, um, so guys, that is essentially how you do exponential regression. What I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna show you a different method for how to do this if you do not have a graphing calculator at home. So guys, there is a way to do this using Desmos, okay? So we are going to use um, this data right here. If you need to look at this, you can take a second, put the video on pause and pull up Desmos. I'm gonna grab this right here. So guys, this is um, your Desmos. And guys, the first thing you do is it says hit this little plus sign and add a table. And then guys, it says to list your X values in X1 and your Y values in Y1. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab, these are all going to be um, my X values, which go in X1, and these are all my Y values, which go in that Y1. So I'm gonna grab my little keyboard here and I'm going to type in zero, one, two, three, and four. So, and then we don't want to do the five, and then I'm going to list out that 15,600, 13,510, 11,700, 10,132, and 8,774. All right, guys, so that listed out in Desmos. Now, you actually can see these points. They are plotted. They're just absolutely ridiculous because they're, you know, in the thousandths up there. So um, I'm not going to actually be using the graph a whole lot on this. Um, I'm gonna be using a lot more of the table situation. So then guys, once I have my um, X values listed out here, it says you want to type in the regression equation. So this is really important. We're gonna type in our regression equation. And instead of Y equals A times B to the X, we're gonna say Y1. And you just type in a Y and then a one. And guys, what that does is that gives our, um, oops, sorry, I'm gonna move this in just a second. So what that does is that um, means we're gonna be pulling the data from this Y, this list in Y1. So Y1, and then there's a little tilde button on your keyboard. It is in, for me, it's right in the top left of my keyboard, whoops, sorry. It is right underneath my little escape right there. It's that little tilde. So I have to hit shift and then tilde. And when I do that, it gives me um, that little tilde. And then I say A times B to the X1. And I just type in that X1. And guys, what it does is it automatically spits that out. Now what it says is you wanna check the log mode and what that does is that shows you your R value right there. So that we, we get our log mode and it shows um, our R value, which is fantastic. And so I think I might have typed something in wrong because these numbers are not right. Let me check my numbers here. Oh, I did. So by the way, if you don't type in the right numbers, it's not gonna give you the right thing. So that's 13,510, 11, there we go. Now it's all the right numbers. 
There we go. That is much better. Okay, so when we see this, we see that it gives us our um, A value and our B value, and it also gives us the um, gives us that A value and that B value. So now I'm going to go over here, and I'm actually going to write out my A value that I'm getting from this little spot on my screen. So I'm going to go here and my A value is going to be, what is that, 15,600.4 and my B value is 0 0.866 or 87 because it says round to the nearest hundredths. And then my R value, um, it's, I imagine it's like a 0.9999 situation again. So my R value is approximately negative one, which means that is very strong decay. It is a strong correlation for decay. If we write our equation here, it's going to be Y is equal to 15,600.4. You notice that is very, very, very close to the actual point on our table here. And then times 0.87 raised up to the x power. So that would be my equation. And guys, you notice that is an extremely strong correlation. And if I zoomed out and showed you um, the points here, you'll notice that my um, exponential curve, my line here, actually goes through those points pretty well. So I had to zoom way, way out for you guys to see that. It'll look a lot better on this second one here. And so you can kind of um, see those guys here. So you can see that here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do this again, and we are just going to change the values in our table. All right? So we're going to, I'm going to jump down here. I think I'm going to, let's see if I can make this look a little bit better. Yes. All right, cool. So there we go. I like that. So it says um, a cup of soup is left on the countertop to cool. The table below gives the temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit um, of the soup when it's recorded over a 10 minute period. Round all the coefficients to the nearest hundredth. So that's two decimals. Remember, we need two decimal places after, um, or two places after the decimals. All right, so two places after the decimals. So we're going to round it to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to adjust my table. Instead of zero, I'm going to change it to two, four, six, eight, and then I'm going to add in a 10. I'm going to go back up and I'm going to make that 180.2, 165.8, 165.9, 165.9, 165.9. And 110.5. So you notice that these um, look way better um, in terms of our uh, little guys here. So you can see um, the different things here. And so I'm going to turn this guy off and we're going to. Hmm. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just delete that and we're going to try it again. So, guys, I have labeled my points here and you notice they are all kind of going here. And so this looks like it is going to be decay again because my numbers are decreasing. So now I go here and I'm going to type in my regression equation. I think I'm going to make it skinny again so that we can see the whole equation. So my regression equation is y1, and then I'm going to do the little tilde, a times b to the x1 power. And when we do that, I'm going to press this little log mode here. Interesting, it is not giving me the right data here. So what did I do wrong? We have our Y1 and our X1 because it's not matching through the little guy here. Okay, I found the issue. It's because I typed it in wrong. Y'all, if you don't type it in correctly, there we go. That looks so much better. All right, so here we go. So now we have our A and our B value. Guys, always check your table. I'm sorry I got that wrong. Yes, if you type in the wrong information, you will get the wrong answer. So and when you do that, we have an R value. We have our A value. We have our B value. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, write that. So my A value is that 180.38. 
And then I'm going to look down here at my B value. It is 0.95, right? And that is going to be decay because this guy is less than 1. You notice these two guys, they are very close to one another, but they are not the same, right? The correct equation, or the, the y-intercept of my prediction equation is the um, a value. The y-intercept of the actual points here is this, um, is that 180.2. And you notice my curve doesn't go exactly through the points, but it does fit the points the very best. And then we look down here and our r value is negative 0.99. So negative 0 0.99. And so guys, once again, that is a very strong correlation of decay, right? A strong decay correlation. So now if we were going to write my equation using the a and the b value, I would write this here and say y is equal to 180.38 times 0.95 raised up to the x power. All right, guys, so this right here is my equation. And it says using this equation to predict the temperature of the soup, using this equation to predict the temperature of the soup, what it will be after 20 minutes. So we want to round to the nearest tenth. So that is one place after our decimal. So what I'm going to do is we say y equals 180.38 times 0.95, and I raise that to the 20th power. And guys, because we're doing everything on Desmos, I will just do that here. So I'm going to drag it over here, and we are going to say y equals 180.38 times 95, and I'm going to raise that up to the 20th power. And what happens when we do that is we see that is going to be 64.66, or if we went around to the nearest tenth, that is going to be 64.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So my final answer, my F of 20 at 20 minutes, it is going to be 60.4 64.7 degrees Fahrenheit so there's just a couple different ways that you can do regression and um, I hope that is helpful and I hope that you guys um, yeah get a chance to use the uh, get a chance to use regression on Desmos or use regression on your calculator so thank you all so much